Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, Pammy Poppins! Who is Pammy Poppins? I've been dedicating my artistic journey to children and youth. That's why one day I've let a friend name me Pammy Poppins and it became my nickname on the web. It suited me well, so I became my own brand to promote and pursue my mission. I believe life offers its loads of magic through wonders and obstacles, and you can spread it sharing constructive stories. I try to teach children to provoke the extraordinary by using their creativity through the process of filmmaking and media empowerment. I may not be flying with an umbrella like the fictional nanny, but I believe we can do magic by telling story using the modest tools we have access to. Being Pammy Poppins gives me the strength to never give up by believing deeply in my powers and convictions. This fictional shield helps me fight the obstacles in the funding of my project of co-creation with children. Co-creating with me is believing everything is possible, even with few resources. The magic begins with sprouts of ideas and grows out to be flowers with love and attention. It could eventually expand to be a great garden of solidarity and compassion with patience and determination. I believe my creativity and my capacity of adaptation have been my key assets for sticking to my mission to produce films and content with and for children. So where does the magic come from? My name is Pamela Bisson. I grew up in a mostly francophone city, the cradle of French America, Quebec City. Located where the St. Lawrence River narrows, Quebec is a very inspiring city to grow up in as an artist. Through times and a lot of travels, I've, I've developed a strong feeling of attachment to my hometown. I love to share its beauties of nature and get inspired by its architecture, history, and people. Both of my parents and my sister are certified tour guides in the city, and so am I. Sharing my cultural identity and exchanging with different culture has been nourishing in every aspect of my artistic process. My first short film in college was even inspired by the touristic industry in Quebec City. Part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network, Quebec City is a city of literature. Although it seems to me that we are also remarkable for our stage arts, circus, music, gastronomy and cinema, our language identity may be a constant fight to preserve and UNESCO title is a great way to promote the French language and culture. I'm aware that my ancestry reflects more than the French culture. Scottish, Irish, English and Mi'kmaq people are also part of my genealogical tree. The reason we still speak French in my province could be the topic of a whole different conference. Point is, my culture became my motor to create. I wish to promote it by becoming its great ambassador to the youth audience. And what are my inspirations? I grew up watching a lot of films and television programs of great quality made in Canada or in Quebec, my French-speaking province. I was a big fan. I remember watching films and TV more than doing any homework as a kid, and I wanted to know everything about it back then. There were great programs and films for children and youth in the 1980s and 1990s. The influence of the content I watched on my development when I was young is undeniable. As a young viewer with one French-speaking family channel and a few education show on public broadcasting networks to choose from, I was in good hands. There was no ocean of infinite content like the web is today. But there was no easy way for me to be part of any production. Medias were not democratized. Times were very different. Stories where children played main characters resonated with me very much and I longed to be part of them. My favorite films were not the American ones, but rather the productions of Roque de Mers, who created over 25 children's long features that were distributed across the world. His vision inspired me very much to build my life mission. He wanted to make films that would be universal by, by their themes and that would show children that life is difficult but worth living. He came up with his rule of productions for its series of films. His main characters had to be aged from 9 to 12 and alternate from a girl to a boy as lead character for every film. Being a citizen of the world, he produced a film in French in Quebec, then in English in the other provinces of Canada, and then in a different country, and he would do that for the whole series. Nature had to be part of the plot, and there was always an animal on the set. This whole set of values was very inspirational to me. Although many of his films were big successes around the world, getting the fundings to produce children's films 
has been challenging through times even for him. To produce his first film, The Dog Who Stopped the War, which became a real classic in Quebec, he had to put his house on mortgage and his wife brought all her precious jewels to the bank to get fundings to produce the film. I believe you need to be a brave activist to defend your ideas and projects for children's rights in the media. I came up with my own rules through constructive experiences. And how did I get into children's filmmaking? When I was studying social and cultural action in, at the University of Quebec in Montreal between 2004 and 2007, there were not so many children's films produced between these years in Canada. Reality television was on the rise and I felt the urge to position myself as an activist for the quality of children's films and media. I took part as an observer to the Children Media Conference organized by the Youth Media Alliance in Montreal. I learned then from panelists that kids would eventually have smartphones and that producer would have to to take that into consideration in the near future. How shocking, I didn't even own one at the time. I got to do my final internship with the content production team of Ramdam, a famous children program that lasted for 10 years on the public TV broadcaster. I was trying to learn as much as I could from the creators. The focus groups I hosted brought me back to my own child development and I got very introspective. As a teenager, I got Americanized by Dawson's Creek, Friends and other shows that made me dream to be part of the American culture. I read teen pop magazines that made me dream of products we can find here. I needed to buy a different pieces of clothes every week to feel confident about myself. My teenage years were marked by nourishing my power of purchasing futile things. My desire to be empowered was blurred by my desire of consumptions. When I think about it, I feel ashamed. I don't think it should be considered as a rite of passage to love to spend time in a shopping mall. We must promote the power of action and the sense of togetherness to youth. We must develop critical thinking so that children can be aware of all aspects of pop culture. Some growth developmental experiences were significant enough to turn me upside down. First was my canoe trip of 33 days in the northern regions of Quebec when I was 16 with my summer camp. The nomadic experience of living with the strict minimum on lakes and rivers has taught me great values. But what really got me into action was my journey in Dakar, Senegal. This initiation to international cooperation project aimed to produce a song and a video clip to sensibilize girls to stay in school. The experience made me realize how much power of action I'm privileged to benefit from my own country. I intended to use it for good as soon as I got back. It also gave me the strength to accomplish great things with no resources. When I got back, I had no idea it would take me years for me to understand all the things that I had learned from this trip to Dakar in Senegal. But I would no longer be passive about my dreams. To experiment with video, I bought a small handy cam as I started to work as a tour guide for students on trips to New York. How ironic, I was finally living and promoting the American dream. Staying long hours and waiting for students on, in Times Square got me more critical about it in the end. I didn't want to dream anymore. I wanted to take action. In a cute little store in Seoul, I was attracted by neon bright colored wigs and I couldn't resist. I bought a few. I would wear them in crowded places in order to get the students to see me at our meeting point. As I was carrying my handy cam with me, I started filming things with my wigs on and I would get people to be very extroverted in front of the camera. I made experimental videos that got my friend and co-worker interested in creating more videos with me. As a duo, we started to define a concept that would allow us to activate our inner child spirit in the public and urban space. We pretended to be shooting star who grant wishes and try to understand mankind. We were dressing up and letting ourselves go wild in public to create reactions that would build up in stories and post-production. We would then question mankind in a very spontaneous and candid way. Because we were acting unconventional, people we encountered tended to react to our looks or behavior. We were creating chemical connections between human beings to elevate ourselves in a philosophical way through videos. This was me finding the root of my voice, storytelling through films and videos in 2009 and 2010. But I wanted to share stories about the things that made me grow and were positive to me as a child. Arts, museums, school and the summer camp experience have been the focus of my childhood. Acknowledging that not every child has access to any of that, I made it my playgrounds 
to get inspirational. Next thing was to find opportunities and ways to create with children. I made a first short documentary with a six-year-old girl I invited to discover stage arts with the local youth theater. This first exercise ended up being the origin of a wide project of initiation to arts and cultural journalism that has been active since 2014. In 2012, I started to work as the assistant director where I had previously been a camper and counselor. On the side of my job, I made a large documentary project about the impact of the camp on people. I tried as many ways as possible to create videos with children in a time where the organization had no content strategy yet. In 2014, I started working as an educator at the primary school. I went to as a child. This was a trip I needed to remember what it's like to be a child who wants to understand the world around. I started to make short films with children in a very restrictive environment where I had to work with a walkie-talkie to keep in touch with my supervisors while I was filming projects with children. I couldn't either control the time where the parents would pick them up. I still managed to make some humble short films. I always felt a great deal of team spirit in the process and even though it could be a hassle at times, I had learned ways to be brave and Senegal. I wasn't gonna give up on my mission. I also made short films during many lab sessions organized by Kinomada. In a very collaborative way, professionals gathered to make films within a week. I tried to get more adults on my team to produce children's sim in that resourceful context. Meanwhile, through my involvement on the board of Video Femme Inspira, the local filmmaker organizations in Quebec City, I found out there could be ways to create more opportunities for me to work with and for children. So I founded a nonprofit organization in 2015 called Le Machin Club. This organization, which aims to produce children media content with and for children, allowed me to create innovative projects in a process of co-creation with the young audience. Therefore, my rules of production and my mission became clear as I shaped the structure of my organization. My rules to create films with and for children. Build a community of children supported by adults. I found the school context too restrictive for my artistic process. I wanted to be able to reach children without having to work with a school. I wanted to be able to blend all ages, children, teenagers, and adults. I also wanted to create a feeling of belonging to the productions, and with Le Machin Club, this aspect became possible. Promote social good and team spirit. Is the film theme related to your audience? What are your social goals with this artistic project? What is the message that the film or project promotes for the young audience? Make it clear for yourself so your creative process finds its way through. The production should ensure participants' involvement and audience growth, as much as influencing your artistic journey. Get the children to be involved in the decision-making process in every step of the production whenever it's possible. To reflect and relate with children in my productions, it's paramount for me to be able to consult them from the beginning of every project I work on. The way I connect with them adapts to every context or issue I want to speak about. Do not wait for funds to take action and create. Being completely free in my creativity has been a form of wealth in itself. The strongest ideas, the ones that you feel in your guts, you must go for them to fulfill your aspirations and be grounded in your mission. If I had waited for funding to start my first projects, nothing would have gotten done and I would still be dreaming about it. Getting in action can help you find your strategic partners in the production. Look for strategic partners to create with. Are you building any bridges and creating opportunities for children and young people within the rest of the community. Work with others to build a better society. Are there any organizations that share the same values as your film project that could partner with you? Some partners help you get fundings from institutions and other can help fun parts or even the whole project. Collaboration is the key to be innovative. Stay flexible with children's and partners' ideas and trust the process. Are you giving space to your collaborators, to the children, the professionals and partners in the projects to be involved in the creative process? Let it be organic and trust the process. This project might not end up to be as perfect as you wished, but the next one will be better and everyone should grow through it. Build bridges, keep your mind open to the world and its diversity. Share your stories to the world, 
so they encounter other cultures. Make sure your vision is not close-minded and bring a vibe of togetherness to your project. My strategies will adapt through the context of production. I may have more or less resources in the future in a world that is changing, but this should never stop us from turning our dreams into action. Thank you very much.